What you see within the blue line is a direct conversion receiver. I'm using it to measure the sideband noise from this local oscillator. But I have a notch filter 50 kHz offset inserted in between here uh, to make the noise vanishingly small at that frequency. This system is limited by the mixers 23, level 23 Schottky diode mixers from mini circuits. As it turns out, uh, look at the previous video, I have to insert 6 decibels of attenuation here as well as here uh, to get a linear system that is reasonably accurate. That means that the upper level that I can send in here is plus 15 dBm. That comes from measuring on the spectrum analyzer through this 20 dB coupler. Uh, so it means I have to correct this oscillator is at plus 21 dBm, the test object. To increase the power handling capacity, I have made this level 29 uh, Schottky diode mixer by connecting uh, four 23, level 23 mixers in parallel, two by two, and those two parallels in series for the output, but in parallel uh, for the inputs means that the input impedance is 12 ohms so I have transformers here for the local oscillator and for the RF while the output two units in parallel is 25 ohms and those 25 ohms in series means 50 ohms for the output so this should tolerate uh, 6 decibels more power so I should be able to remove the 6 decibel attenuators I have here. The noise floor is a little higher than before. I have not yet recalibrated the system for the new power level, but it's clear from the screen. Here is the upper side and here is the lower side. That notch filter is much more visible now than it was before. And correlation is uh, very small uh, or let it put it like this the correlation is very large it's the same noise in both channels so the correlation spectrum only gives 4 dB below the level I see here but I have to calibrate first the strong signal is now plus 0.7 dBm so I want the weak one at uh, minus 49.3 and that's where it is within a couple of tenths of a dB and now again uh, the S meter graph shows minus 50 so this is now dBc per Hertz on this signal from the signal generator and I had to increase this calibration number by nearly 7 decibels. The new noise floor is at minus 149 dB, dBc per hertz, sorry, 149 dB be below the strong signal in 1 kilohertz bandwidth and correlation between the channels is 4.6 decibels below that. This sums up to minus 183.6 dBc per hertz and it's not quite as good as I saw with the other mixers at uh, about 6 decibels lower power levels. I don't know re the reason for this, I have to look into it a bit. 
here is an interesting phenomenon. Uh, I have set the oscillators to different frequency by about 1 Hz. Previously I have had them locked to each other. Uh, here on the oscilloscope the upper track is the output from one of the mixers uh, after filtering off the uh, 20 MHz. The lower track is the rectified loudspeaker output. I just put the rectifier and some capacitors here on the oscilloscope and the transformer to step up the signal level because otherwise it would be too loud for me to do the video at the same time. As you can see uh, the frequency of the noise peaks is twice the difference frequency between the two oscillators. I have disconnected the I channels uh, on the audio side and you can see uh, the pattern is here but not visible at the edge but strong near the center. And now I have disconnected the Q channels instead and this phenomenon is much stronger at higher frequencies but seems to be about similar at the center. And uh, I connect back so I have I and Q. And this is what I am seeing. The noise floor goes from about minus 141 and a half to minus 139. Now I connected two 47 ohm resistors in parallel to the 47 ohm resistors that load the mixers on DC and frequencies below about 15 Hz. As a result, the variation is now bigger, still from minus 141.5, but now up to about minus 138. And now I disconnected, so there is no load at all at DC, and this made the situation much worse. Still, uh, one. 41.5 is roughly the lowest, but it goes up to minus 135 now. I connected the two 47 ohm resistors on each channel uh, in series to load by 2 times 47 ohms, nearly 100 ohms. And here is the screen. It looks like this, and here is what I see on the oscilloscope. So the load is critical, and I will try to optimize. So here is the triplexer. What I did was to change this resistor from 47 ohms to uh, 150 ohms. And here is what I see on the oscilloscope. The noise is fairly constant. And of course also on the S meter graph. And it's around the optimum value, minus 141 and a half. And I don't see the variations here. But I see something here. It seems to be a faster variation, twice as fast. Uh, I run the waterfall faster. Oh. Uh. 
Shannon is quite clear in the close range uh, this noise variation come with the double frequency it means I have it from both the I channel and the Q channel at the same time and they are phase shifted by 90 degrees this is when I look much closer this is uh, 7 kilohertz or something from the center and there of course the noise is much stronger I have disconnected the load on the sum frequency and this is obviously not a good idea now the load on the sum frequency is 100 ohms and the noise goes from about minus 141 and a half to minus 137 and that is at this point and I did change the bandwidth and restored one kilohertz uh, I measured previously with a wider bandwidth with 50 ohms on the sum frequency 20 megahertz at close range uh, the difference is not so big it's still from 141 and a half to well it's better to 137 or even 136 and a half and it's obviously much better at the large frequency separation now I'm loading the uh, sum frequency with the 25 ohms and the difference is small but I have a feeling this is a little bit better I have removed the resistor so there is a 3.3 nanofarad capacitor directly on the mixer output and uh, I can now see uh, one mixer dominates in this phenomenon and I'm looking at large frequency separation just looking at the color of the waterfall this is 12 ohms load and I think it is clearly a little bit better so something 25 or 12 or in between it seems to be not very critical but there is a need for a load on this points so the optimum load I find for 20 megahertz is 18 ohms I don't want to make this capacitor bigger because it starts to affect the frequency response uh, in the interesting region at 50 kilohertz and below uh, where the impedance is fairly high it's the output impedance of the mixer which is unloaded it might mean something 150 ohm is three times the nominal impedance 18 ohm is one third and this is the difference frequency and this is the sum frequency I'm now tuning the frequency very slowly And here, uh, within a very narrow range, there is injection locking. This is the way I have been doing measurements previously. And now I see a noise floor which is minus 148.7. But the conversion loss has probably changed, so I will check calibration. So now the level is calibrated again and now the noise floor comes at minus 
150.2 uh, with six decibels lower on the correlated part. So that means 156.2 and that corresponds to minus 186.2 dBc per hertz and that seems to be the limit for this system and as far as I can understand the limit is in the Schottky mixers I have changed the routine that draws the graphs so the green dots are now permanented on the screen and you can see how the average uh, evens out and this is the screen and this is with 8000 averages and the noise floor is 1 50.2 plus 6 decibels uh, 156.2 that means minus 186 dBc per hertz and I can expand now the spectrum to look more in detail uh, so I have an interference here uh, the yellow track is the average of the 100 uh, latest correlation spectra while the green track is the average of 12,000 spectra and I can see some structure but mostly it's noise I will wait a little more this is what I see after a long time it's the edge of the spectrum from 9.953 to 9.97 something and here is the slope of sideband noise some interference here and a big spur but this this looks like not sideband noise it looks like some interference and this is obviously interference so if we make a guess that this line slopes like that I don't know I have restored the full uh, spectrum width 96 kilohertz and now I disconnect the this oscillator and then hold Z and it's clear now the noise is much weaker so what I'm seeing is sideband noise at least from here up to here on the notch frequency uh, it's less obvious so I will change parameters a little bit and then look again I have placed the mouse at the level of the green curve here now when the oscillator is running and I switch it off and then clear the correlation spectrum and I have to wait a little the correlation spectrum is about 3 decibels lower here so it means that the sideband noise and the system noise without signal are about the same so the sideband noise is not at minus 186 it's at 
minus 189 dBc per hertz. And if it is equal amounts of AM noise and uh, phase noise, it means that the phase noise is at minus 192 dBc per hertz. And that is probably the limitation set by the Schottky mixers. I have now disconnected the mixers and put dummy loads on the triplexer. And, but I made contact with the grounds to the chassis here. The green curve is outside the window, so I have to move it. And here it is. And it looks noisy, because this is a much weaker signal. I have to wait for quite some time to get a smooth curve here. It's quite clear that the interference I have seen in this region uh, does not come when I have dummy loads directly on the triplexer. I added some more ground cables to connect the boxes to each other for low frequencies. And then uh, it seems that the interference is more or less gone. I read minus 150.6 and with correlation 7.9 dB below that. This is minus 188.4 dBc per hertz and that's AM noise plus FM noise. I have added some more ground connections between the boxes with thick copper wire. And uh, now it seems there is no interference anymore. This looks like uh, normal noise only. Uh, the result I find is that the noise floor is at minus 149.8 and correlation is 5.3 below that. This sums up to 185.1 dBc per hertz. And I disconnect the signal here. with the dummy load to make the receiver see the correct impedance. The output impedance of this thing is 50 ohms. This gives a noise floor at minus 150.5 with 8 dB correlation. That sums up to minus 188 0.5 dBc per hertz. Uh, that's only 3 dB below what I saw with the signal present, which means that the noise, uh, sideband noise of uh, this oscillator, sorry, the sideband noise I see uh, at this frequency where there is a notch. Removing the noise from this unit is this notch. Uh, then the noise I see is minus uh, 188 dBc per hertz. And that is probably the noise from the Schottky mixers. This is without a signal uh, with many averages, 110,000. It's obvious there is still some interference coming into the system, but as you see the scale is half a dB per division, so this interference probably doesn't add uh, significant noise.
I have removed the notch filter at 50 kilohertz below the center, 10 megahertz, and then I measured the S meter and the correlation readings. 40 kilohertz, 30 kilohertz, all the way down to 30 hertz. I have to use different bandwidths. It goes faster with 10, 1 kilohertz, but at close separations I have to reduce the bandwidth because there is a slope on the noise floor. And then even closer I have to set 50 hertz bandwidth because there are odd overtones of the mains frequency that I have to avoid. And then even closer I have to set 10 hertz because there are overtones of 50 hertz, 50 hertz, 100 hertz, 150 and so on. Uh, and then I measure the S meter reading, the correlation reading, uh, which is always small uh, because there is a lot of noise now because what I'm looking at is the noise of the less good oscillator, assuming that the better oscillator is much better than this. Uh, then I can compute the noise as dBc per hertz. It goes from minus 180 down to minus 113. And the logarithm of the frequency offset in hertz comes here, and I plot it in a diagram. So uh, here is the noise curve that I observe, this curve here. Uh, the red curve, that is the citrine from Wenzel I found somewhere, somebody has measured it. And as you can see, it is a bit better, significantly better, 10 dB here. But in this medium range, the result is the same. And at wider separation, again, the citrine is better. But the citrine is measuring only the phase noise. My measurement is the sum of the phase noise and the AM noise that is probably present or certainly present at high offsets. At close range maybe uh, the AM noise is very small compared to the phase noise. I don't know. Uh, I will proceed with these experiments uh, trying to uh, look with an interferometer.